Hello and welcome to the Fintech Monthly. We're here in Rag Lawrence Graham & Co's neighbourhood at Moore London and we've got a particularly fascinating episode for you this month, including investment news, Apple Pay's UK debut and Mike Tyson's first foray into the world of Bitcoin. July was a month in which investors really flexed their muscles, with UK fintech companies raising over $65 million in the last four weeks. Borders and Capital led a $20 million round in Credit Benchmark, a company that helped the banks make smarter decisions by delivering better benchmarking data. The same amount, $20 million, was raised by small business lending platform iWalker in a round led by Acton Capital. Balderton has also led a £1.5 million deal in travel money company Revolut. Crowdfunding also took off, with Crowdcube raising £6 million from Numis and Cedars raising £10 million from Payton Capital Trust and Augmentum Capital. Crowdcube's deal certainly raised eyebrows in the city as Numis, the stockbrokers, will help Crowdcube deliver IPO opportunities to the crowd. Apple's launches are usually famous for being extremely well stage managed. However, when it came to Apple Pay's UK debut, one of the world's largest banks accidentally let the cat out of the bag. HSBC UK's official account tweeted a message in reply to a customer and mentioned that Apple Pay would launch on Tuesday the 14th of July, therefore confirming the launch two days ahead of time. Of course, irony came back to haunt HSBC. They were supposed to be amongst the first batch of banks to be able to offer Apple Pay to their customers, however they weren't ready in time and therefore they had to launch 14 days later. Blockchain company Coincilium is planning to float on AIM. By doing so it would become the first UK Bitcoin company to IPO on the market. Coincilium invests in, incubates and advises companies that work with Bitcoin or the blockchain. The company, based near Edgware Road, hope to raise £3 million by listing on London's junior market. CEO Eddie Travia has said that he wants to make a statement and open some people's eyes. Only time will tell if heads will turn in the city following Coincilium's IPO. Martin Wheatley is no longer head of the FCA after George Osborne decided not to renew his contract. Under his tenure, the FCA met with organisations such as Tech City UK in Level 39 and launched Project Innovate. With the new boss preparing to take the reins, we caught up with Richard Gould of RAG Lawrence Graham & Co and asked him if the FCA has done enough to enable UK regulators to accommodate the new business model spawned by fintech or if there's still some more work to do. I think that heading up the FCA has got to be one of the hardest jobs in the city. but. Overall, I think the FCA has really knocked it out of the park. And I'm not suggesting that it's perfect. There's a lot further to go with chopping down bureaucracy, speeding up regulation processes, getting clearances approved when we've got change of controls or bringing in VC investment. However, what you've got to think of is what are we comparing ourselves against? Processes for regulation are faster here than they are in New York. They're faster, they're more slick than they are throughout Europe. And we see companies moving here because of the more benign regulatory regime. So, to my mind, I think they're doing a pretty good job. For more pearls of wisdom from Richard Gould, check out his regular posts on techcitynews.com. July saw two new initiatives put in place by government to help the UK fintech scene spread its wings. Earlier in the month, Eileen Burbage of Passion Capital was named by the Treasury as the UK's special envoy for fintech. George Osborne announced her appointment as part of a raft of plans to attempt to improve the UK's productivity. And it's not only the Chancellor that's been busy. The PM has also announced that he's taking a delegation of UK fintech leaders to Asia in August. However, the tour has been met with criticism by some as the Malaysian PM is currently accused of receiving money for personal gain. Mike Tyson, the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, has announced that he is to launch a Bitcoin ATM. All going to plan, the machines will be available for use in August in Las Vegas. However, the project has been rocked by accusations of a scam. In addition to other misdemeanors, Duncan Riley of Silicon Angle noted that Bitcoin Brands, the company that's behind Tyson's ATM, is valued at under $7,000. So it's a bit odd that they have struck a deal with one of the world's most famous fighters. Whether the project succeeds or fails, its punchy strapline might be the best bit of the whole thing. 
Mike Tyson's fastest knockout in the ring was 30 seconds. The Mike Tyson Bitcoin ATM can turn your cash into Bitcoin in 20. With marketing like that, it's clear that Mike wants to take a bite out of the competition. That's it from FinTech Monthly this month. In the meantime, check out all the latest FinTech news on techcitynews.com. I've been Ben Goldsmith, and thanks for watching.